The RTX 5060 Ti is the best overclocker out of the new RTX 5000 series lineup on average. I tried a lot of cards and at first I thought I had a lot of golden samples, but it turns out all of these go really fast. So here we are back at the PS series with a full overclocking tutorial for you guys. Now, few disclaimers. First of all, if you guys also want to get lower temperature, lower power consumption and make the card run quieter, I recommend you guys follow my undervolting guide instead. But if you want the absolute maximum performance, this is the right video for you. Now, this is going to work for every single card in the market. So today I'm using a Gigabyte OC Ice Eagle 5060Ti 16 gigabytes. But if you have an 8 gigabyte model or any kind of other brand, it's going to be the same. If you have, I don't know, a pallet version or if you have a MSI Gaming X Trio, it's going to be the same. Okay, it doesn't matter. Now, for all of these cards, we're using the same two softwares. Heaven Benchmark and MSI Afterburner. Now, both of them will be linked down below in the description so you guys can download them. And I'm using the stable version of Afterburner, but if you have the beta version, it's going to also work with the same numbers. But if you want to cross-reference what the UI looks like because it's slightly different, you can also go check out my RTX 5070 Ti undervolting guide where I am using the beta version. So with that said, let's get into Windows. Let's start tweaking. But before, let me ask you guys something. If at the end of the video, it's going to be helpful. If you could drop a like and subscribe, you'd help me out a lot with the channel. So that's the only thing I ask after you've done the tutorial, okay? Let's go. Here we are overclocking. So the first thing you want to do is open up Heaven Benchmark and make sure you're running it with quality on Ultra, tessellation on Extreme, anti-aliasing on X8, and resolution at 2560 by 1440, even if you have a 1080p monitor. At this point, you want to press the Windows key and open up MSI Afterburner. Now, once you're here, what you want to do is go into settings and unlock voltage monitoring and voltage control. Hit apply, hit yes, and it's going to pop up again. Now, depending on your card, you may have the core voltage slider locked, but this is not really important because I find on this card, core voltage slider isn't quite as important. First of all, I'm going to give you guys the preset in case you don't want to think about it and you just want the free performance. So free performance is as follow. Core clock, 200. Memory clock, 2000. Power limit, fully unlocked. Don't worry about it. Hit apply. And uh, you've done it, guys. Now you want to save this to run all the time. So hit save, click on one, click on one, click save. Go into settings, hit start with Windows, start minimize, hit apply. Hit OK. And you can now minimize this and go play your games with an extra 10% free performance, pretty much. However, if you want to stick around, I can show you how you can get a lot more because this card is the best overclocker out of the 5000 series so far, okay? And I try a lot of cards before making those videos. So it's on average, it overclocks really well. So with that said, if you have the beta version, you can fully unlock this one to 3000. It's gonna always work pretty much, but I like to run it on 2000 because I don't want to stress my memory too much. But really, 3000 is going to work fine. So just do it. Now, core clock. Here's how you do it with the method. OK, so you want to go up 100 megahertz at a time. So you want to try 300, hit apply, go play games and run some benchmarks and see if it crashes. Now, if it doesn't crashes, you want to go up by another 100 megahertz. So in this case, 400. Go test it out. Now, eventually, it's going to crash. Once it crashes, you want to go back 50 megahertz, but not from the crash point. You want to go back 50 megahertz from the non-crashing point. In this way, you're absolutely sure you're not going to crash because it's not worth it to get an extra 2% more performance if once every three months your PC may crash while you're playing competitively, if it makes sense. So you want to make sure it's stable. However, I'm also going to tell you guys, on average, most cars can do 400. So this is just as a reference point. I know it's crazy, but some cars can do 500 points stable. Not this one, though, as you can see. And if you crash, there's nothing to worry about. Your screen may go black, OK? But it's going to eventually come back. And even if it doesn't, you can just turn off the PC. You then want to hit Reset over here. And uh, after you crash, I recommend you reboot your PC before getting back into testing, OK? You don't want to keep testing after crashing because it may uh, alter your values. You may not be getting 
an adequate test. Now, this card specifically tops out at 450 with an unlocked power limit and 2000 megahertz on the memory clock. This is what I would be running at. However, if it was my card for my daily driver, I would run it at around 350 because I want to be extra sure that everything is stable. And this is pretty much it. Overclocking is a lot simpler than undervolting. As you can see, every single one of you guys can do it. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, please drop a like and subscribe. And also drop a comment down below. Tell us what was your maximum and what you're currently running as a daily overclock. And of course, if you have any kind of questions, drop them down below. I try to see them all and to answer them all. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.